My name is Cindy Schmidt, and I'm an associate program manager for the Ecological Conservation Program, and I'm based at NASA Ames Research Center in California. My first career out of college was actually as an urban planner. Um, I have a master's degree in urban and regional planning, and I started off as a planner for various cities. Um, but in the late 80s, I got the opportunity to live in the Netherlands for a couple of years, and I went to a school there called ITC, which is now recognized worldwide for its work in geoinformation science and earth observations. So back then, they were just getting started with using this new technology called GIS. While most of their focus was on air photo interpretation, they also exposed us to satellite imagery. So once I started learning air photo interpretation and dabbled a little bit in early GIS, I was totally hooked at looking things from a different perspective, both in space and time. I mean, to me, being able to look at how places on Earth are changing over time um, from that perspective of space is incredibly powerful. How's it changed over time? Wow, in so many ways. I mean, I think for me, since a huge part of my early to mid career was doing image processing, or as I like to say, turning data into information, that's where I've seen a ton of change. Um, in the early days, everything was sort of command line and done on central computers, and you had to, you know, it took forever to land to download a Landsat scene, for example, um, and to do a land cover classification, you submitted it to a central server and then got the results overnight the next day. I mean, it took forever and and heaven forbid if you wanted your vector data integrated with your raster data. Um, but now, of course, in addition to everything being in the cloud and the computers being so much more powerful, there's a lot more focus on providing solutions. Um, in other words, people don't necessarily need to be experts um, in remote sensing to get a good land cover map um, or look at change over time. About seven years ago, I started that program with really the intention of building the capacity of tribes to use geospatial technology for natural and cultural resource management. And my interest in all of this really started back in the mid 90s when I was working on a project that was funded through NSF to build the capacity of tribal college faculty to use GIS. Um, and so I got to go to the Navajo Nation and the Salish Kootenai um, Tribal Nation in Montana, where I really learned about the challenges those communities face, but also about their deep cultural and spiritual connection to the environment, which really resonated with me. Um, and then later, um, a few years later, I also hosted and mentored several Native American students um, at NASA Ames, which was really challenging, actually, for many reasons, and clarified to me how poorly we as an agency were doing in terms of truly understanding and working with these communities. Um, so as I got more involved with the Applied Sciences program, um, and eventually the capacity building program, I was really astounded in how much we were investing in developing the capacity of people in other countries to use earth observations and not at all with these sovereign nations within our own boundaries. And so along with the program manager for capacity building, we decided to start this program where we could start working more closely with tribal nations. And in my opinion, it's so important for so many reasons. One is really recognizing the importance of indigenous knowledge um, in, in everything we do. Um, and then also from a biodiversity and ecological conservation viewpoint, you know, the contribution from indigenous peoples globally um, is essential for maintaining biodiversity and protecting our important ecosystems. 
primary ways that I like to share knowledge with others is really through teaching, both teaching and capacity building. I started teaching remote sensing classes a long time ago at local universities and community colleges and just really loved it. I learned about teaching as being a good listener, which has really been important in my work with um, with applied sciences projects, which absolutely requires that ability to listen to end user needs. I've mentored students at NASA for many years, um, which is so important and incredibly rewarding. Um, and I also love talking to younger students uh, in classrooms and telling them about all the amazing things that we do at Earth, in Earth Sciences. Um, honestly, there's nothing better than watching young people get excited about the work we do and watching those light bulbs go off, you know, when when they understand the power of looking at the Earth from space. One of the very first applied projects that I worked on was called GRAPES, um, has a great acronym. It's Grapevine Remote Sensing Analysis of Phylloxera Early Stress. And this project used satellite and airborne remote sensing products to look at the health of grapevines during the invasion of this deadly root louse. It was just decimating the vineyards in Napa Valley. Um, and that root louse is called phylloxera. So we were trying to determine whether you could see the decline of the grapevines using near-infrared imagery before it could be detected visually, which potentially could have a huge impact for vineyard managers planning treatment and other kinds of health strategies for the vineyards. So we worked closely, we were lucky enough to work closely with Mondavi Winery during that time, which required us to understand and learn quite a bit about vineyard management. And at that time, the wineries weren't really using geospatial technology, let alone remote sensing. Um, so while we were learning about vineyard management, we were teaching them about remote sensing and GIS. So that was really what got me hooked on applied work. I mean, really showing how remote sensing and geospatial technology could help people do their job better um, or help improve the environment. Um, or increase their quality of life. My work has taken me literally to all corners of the earth. Um, a lot of my job with the Ecological Conservation Program involves um, me being the interface between our funded projects um, that are in our portfolio and the project PIs and their teams. And so since all the projects have to have at least one end user, it really benefits us to get a deeper understanding of the needs and challenges and barriers um, to use earth observation products and methodologies for decision making. So and the best way to do that is to go talk with the end users um, and the project teams directly. So I do try to attend as many project meetings as possible, which means that I travel a lot. Um, so I've been so fortunate to travel to places like Mongolia to see how the Wildlife Conservation Service works with Kashmir goat herders, to Belize where I was able to see their efforts in preserving their amazing coral reefs and to Idaho, where they're using remote sensing for beaver reintroduction and so many more amazing, cool places and people. Um, I, I really do feel like I have the coolest job on the planet. Honestly, my best advice is to be open to things that may be outside your wheelhouse. Every day I learn so many things, even this late in my career. Um, I've been so lucky to be involved in agriculture, human health, wildfire, disasters, ecological conservation um, projects and programs. Um, and I've learned so much from each and every one of them. Um, it's added a dimension to my career that I never could have planned um, long ago, but has been so incredibly fulfilling.